So I'm going to be working on the door on the door rails, on the front rails here and on the side rails of this. And uh, I'm going to be using my rabbit plane, which is my Stanley 7878 right here in the background. And uh, I've made uh, the, the front rails here are all going to take a one inch tenon because uh, I want to make sure there's a lot of meat on them to be able to stop it from shifting side to side if it ever gets pushed or moved or anything, you know, when we're rearranging the house or if we ever move. Uh, the other thing is uh, these are going to take three quarter inch tenons and I'm not sure why I did that. It wouldn't have been that much harder to make them one inch tenons, but now that means I have to reset my, uh, my fence depth. It was just a stupid uh, workflow mistake that I made. So I should have made these one inch, but now they're actually three quarter inch tenons. The, con the only convenience about making, the only convenience about making these three and three quarter inch tenons on the side is that these vertical dividers here are three quarter inch tenons. They don't go the whole way through. There's a three inch and that's a two inch width, so that's fine, um, yeah. I'm gonna start with my side rails here, and I'll set the fence to three quarters, then I'll confirm it, uh, and then I'll mark up one of these right here, and make sure that it, the distance, so I'll, I'll maybe make a little mark here with the, there's a spur, there's a spur there on it. I'm gonna turn that out, and then I'll just engage it like this and just mark it down, you know, on both sides. And then I'll measure the distance between there and see if that's the distance I want. It's really not that important that it be exactly the same, that it be exactly the same as my plans, as long as everything is exactly the same across all the pieces. That's what's going to ensure it stays square and true and whatnot. So I want to, I want to get this as close as possible to my measurements, but I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. I'm going to begin with my three quarter inch uh, tenons on all these side pieces here, these side rails, and I'm just going to take my square, I'm going to set it to three quarters of an inch. So over here, I'm just going to make little marks. And between my marks, you probably can't see them, but there's a mark here and here. And so I'm just going to place this on that mark and then see how close I am to the measurement I need, which is 13 and a half, and I'm right on. So the mark is right there. I'm going to set my fence now based off of this three quarter inch. I've got it locked down really tight. And I'm also keeping track of all my, uh, all the grain direction and such. I'm trying to keep my groups together. Now, before I actually set the spur out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the fence. You want to keep in mind that your blade, if you don't retract it, it's probably protruding. So, you know, I could probably stand to take it out just the tiniest little bit. So what I like to do is I put this right by the blade because the blade is where you're going to be out and bring the fence up to it. Okay. So what I've done is I'm going to take, I, I unlock the fence, I set the square up against it, and then bring that up to the fence, and then just lock it down. Nice and tight. Now I like to also double check right here, in the front, and the back. That's good. All right, so I'm going to leave that. That's my three quarter inches. Now these, have got, these are going to be, these are going to go a quarter of an inch deep. So I'm going to take another one. I, I actually have another square I can use. If you have another square, you can use another square like this, but this is kind of overkill, right? Whatever. But this needs to go a quarter inch deep. So I'm going to just ever so carefully do that. Now if you think about the way a plane cuts, the blade sticks out lower than the bottom or the sole of the plane itself. If you put a, a rule over it, you can see it pivots on the blade, on the iron, you see? I don't know, can you see that it's pivoting on the iron? Just slightly. What I'm going to do is set this very gently on the iron. And set my depth against that.
All right. So using my squares like that, I've got a good, um, I've got a good uh, reference here. I've got the, the, I've got the depth stop, and I've also got the width with this fence. Before I do anything, I'm going to use a test piece. You know you're supposed to pull back on the first strokes, right? So. All right, I just bottomed out on my depth stop here. Use my square. Okay, one thing I can tell you is that I, I leaned it too far this way, so I'll have to be aware of that. But that's okay, I'll just have to be a little bit more aware. Now what I'm gonna do is take this over to the piece where it needs to go, more or less, which would be on the leg, and then I'm gonna see the depth. These pieces are gonna go right on the, these are gonna lock into the legs here, and that, it doesn't need to go into the slot. What it actually needs to do, it just be the same depth, it needs to be the same as this edge right here. So we'll, we'll take this one for example, we'll turn it towards you, and then we're gonna measure the same depth of this. And, I don't know if you can see, that's pretty close, it overhangs a little bit. So since I kinda wanted to uh, actually cut a less deep than that, I have two options, I could just back off the iron to smidge, or I could just reset the fence slightly lower, and I think that's what I'll do. I'll just reset the fence. So now I got my test piece worked out. This is the actual good side. Now we're going to start cutting some real joints here. We're gonna cut the tendons on this. So you can do these if you're, if you're really confident in like that they're all the same thickness, which these are really close, um, then you can just clamp them all together, you know, and then cut them at once. But, um, I kind of get nervous. I mean, what the reason that helps then because it gives you your, a larger register as you go. So I'm gonna, so I'm actually gonna try that on this one. I've never done that before, but I'm gonna give it a try, and see how that works. And again, I really do not want blowouts, so I'm gonna bring the spur back. But I've already severed severed the fibers. So my marking gauge. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Ah, oh, look at that edge so far. That's great. Okay. Okay, I did have a bit of a mishap. Something caught on the end. I'll have to fix that. That's a real disappointment. So one problem with this plane I found is that, you know, it, the spur, if you tilt it at the end, something catches it like that. There's an, well, that's probably the blade right there, the iron that catches it. So, should I press my luck is the question. I'm gonna press it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna lift that out of the way. Try not to bend it, just trying to move it out of the way. And then I'll just glue that back down, no big deal. All right, I'm at the end. 
And I'm going to check for square across it. Pretty square. All right. Now that looks like a big mishap, but I'm really, really quite sure the glue will make that disappear. So I'm not worried about it. And you can see that's a really clean cut there. I'm going to check across it. At the end, it looks like I was dipping a little bit. Probably was, yeah. But the rest of it is pretty good. I think what I did is at the end, when the depth stop was coming off, I, I went down. So I'll be a little bit more mindful about that on the next one, but it's such a small area, it's not a big deal. Feels great. Okay, that's that. One thing real quick I want to show you is that it looks like, if you can look there, it looks like this is slightly, it's moving. It looks like on this one here, you see how it's kind of looks like it's out of square there. I'm going to have to probably work on that a little bit. This is, this is probably just my inexperience here, but um, I'm pleased with the overall clean, how clean the joint is, but Again, I think it drifted away slightly, and I'm not sure what that is attributed to or why. The other one, I didn't have that problem. This one that blew out in the back, it's extremely crisp. So I can't really be sh I can't really be sure what happened there. But I know that I was working through some figured grain, and that probably had something to do with it. But overall, I'm really satisfied with the joint. Yeah. I think it's gonna be nice. That looks to be a lot more, a lot better, a lot crisper, more at 90 degrees.
Don't know if you can tell, but this is a big old knot here, so it's not going very well. Okay, that is definitely the death spot. Looks good. All right, got one side done. I think that's probably about 20 total minutes of work involved in this. So not bad at all. This is gonna be the bottom piece. Then these are the top pieces, so. As you can see, we got nice uniform tenons here. Just got to do a little bit more work on them. They'll be spread out like that. Looks great. So we got to do the back of the tenons now, but no problem at all. Great. I've left <clears throat> I've left it really heavy. Didn't really I didn't completely take away the line there, so it fits it starts to go in but not much really at all. So if I force it, maybe it'll go in. Which is great. Now just a couple more of these to do.
there it is, that's it. I got the sides more or less ready to go. I've gotta actually mortise them in, I've gotta take them down, I've gotta tweak every little, uh, I've gotta tweak every tendon a little tiny bit. I made them really tight, except for this one. I, this one up here, I think I just, um, whenever I was cutting the groove, I, it was a little off, so it's kinda of loose up there, but that's okay because it's gonna be in a tendon, uh, it's gonna be deeper, so no big deal. Right now, everything is fitting really nicely. I'm really, I'm excited about whew, how it looks. I'm really, really excited about this. It, it just looks great. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, like as you saw, I just cut the tendons. I used my 78 uh, to get the, uh, to do most of the work. I used the, uh, the iron from the Stanley 45 to, to take, get my final thickness on these. And then um, I just use a combination of different techniques. So I, uh, what I found worked best in the end to clean up the backside was to start it with the 78, take the saw, uh, make a, a depth cut, and then just pop it out with the chisel. So that was really it. But yeah, so I'm not gonna cut the mortises. I'm not gonna uh, get them done right now. That'll be for another video. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this next step in the sideboard build. I hope it's been enjoyable and maybe a little bit useful for you. And I'll see you around for the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.